I find it interesting that the diagnosis of allergies in general is increasing, especially in our pediatric population. And it's, a, it's very interesting and a little alarming that the diagnosis of anaphylaxis is increasing as well. And anaphylaxis is a very severe uh, allergy reaction where um, there is throat tightening, trouble breathing, um, and this really is a medical emergency that requires attention quickly. So we have had an increase in the diagnosis of anaphylaxis in both um, in, in all settings, emergency room, office visits, and outpatient um, clinic visits. And so what that tells me is that parents are reacting to symptoms that their children are having and recognizing it for the emergency that it is. But why are we having such an increased rate over the past couple of years? Um, I, I really don't know why that is. Peanut allergies um, are the number one antigen or allergic reactor that um, we have for the pediatric population. And this is a fairly new thing over the past 10 years. Um, long ago, um, when I was in school, we had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches all the time at school through the cafeteria. Um, peanut allergies were really not um, recognized. We didn't have a lot of kids with peanut allergies, um, maybe because peanut allergies tend to be so severe. And the thought um, over the last several years has been wait before you um, expose your child to peanuts. Uh, we've had an increase in the um, number of reactions that we're having. Perhaps as that immune system matures, it sees the peanut, aller peanut antigen as something to be allergic to. Whereas if we expose the child a little bit earlier, um, then the child is not so likely to develop that allergy. Um, the new recommendations are to start exposing the children a little bit earlier in their nutritional um, diet with a peanut um, instead of waiting until they're two or 18 months. As with any allergy treatment, the idea is to desensitize you to the antigen or the thing that you're allergic to. And so by using um, very small, minute amounts of that peanut substance, the antigen, um, perhaps we can help people who have really severe reactions not have um, that type of a severe reaction. Now, that should only be done under the supervision of an allergist um, and n not something that the parents would expose their children to because they want their child to have a lesser peanut allergy. Um, this should really only be done under medical supervision. I think it probably is something that um, as our immune system matures, as we're infants and growing into that five and six year old time frame, that the immune system matures enough that it does auto-sensitize itself to some of those allerg allergens out there, particularly maybe the ragweed and the trees, pollens, and those types of things. We do see an increase in the um, number of allergy diagnoses from zero to two over the past couple of years, but then it really tapers off again by the time the children are five and six when we follow their claims history through. So we do think that it is something that they can outgrow. I think it's really important for parents to um, talk with their doctors, their pediatricians or their family doctors about um, the um, incidence of peanut allergies within their families. Um, talk about whether or not the kids uh, might be low risk or medium risk or high risk for developing a peanut allergy and when is the best time during that child's uh, nutritional exploration, when should they introduce peanut products?